the very important Punic ports of Carthage uh, witness about uh, the maritime power of the Carthaginians who constructed and founded the first city here in 814 BC. We can see the military port which is circular form and from the other side you got the rectangular port and both were connected through that uh, canal. You can also see the marabout of uh, Lella Salha who was a holy woman, a sage and uh, recognizable with that uh, whitewashed cupola. This was a holy uh, woman which uh, source and well is still venerated and worshipped now by women who go often to make a visit there. Now we are crossing the uh, historical itinerary of Carthage which is covered now with bituma and crossed by cars. New monuments replaced the ancient ones. And we're going to cross all the coastal area from one side to the uh, hinterland area where you can uh, see other places full and rich with history and heritage. In this area and on the top of that hill you can see the Cathedral of St. Louis which commemorates the coming of King Louis who was here under the Crusades and died in Carthage. But also that hill is a perfect example of the stratification of the different uh, heritage layers reflecting different cultural identities of Tunisians starting from Punic times to Roman times and finishing with the latest times French protectorate and nowadays. The Roman cisterns of Carthage were provided with water through the very impressive Hadrian's aqueduct. This aqueduct was running at a distance of 130 two kilometers. So it is one of the most important Roman hydraulic works ever built in all Roman world. Me as a donkey many times in this country people laugh at me but I'm uh, also in the same time the instrument which was used during centuries for agriculture and for all kind of use of humans living in this earth. looking from the other side. This is a nice uh, continuation between uh, cultures and religion and shows about a uh, high degree of tolerance and coexistence between uh, religions in Tunisia. Driving the way from Carthage to neighboring area the landscape changed completely with concrete everywhere. Chinese have grown also here like mushrooms. And we can see some of the results of this invading urbanism. Chinatown. Nonobstant that Chinese tried also to percute and penetrate the Tunisian economy with no big success until now, but they are still trying and they will succeed in the future. Friendly people everywhere here. People telling me hello and other leaving me the place so that I can ride quietly in these new areas of the city. All cars slowing, some curious people looking to me and I'm still wondering. People are building everywhere, new urbanism everywhere, Carrefour centers everywhere. Tunisians are starting to shift very quickly their way of consuming things and joining more and more what they call the new modern societies. Carrefour is the symbolic representative of this new wave of marketing that also killed many small shops, handicrafts. People now prefer to go buy directly in Carrefour as they find all products they will use in their life. All these areas which are now satelliting Carrefour supermarket center in the past were all agricultural fields where people were cultivating maize, spices and tomatoes. They were using to sell them on that previous narrow street which is now nearly a motorway. Today 
all the area, all the urbanism is swallowing, invading savagely the ancient territory of fields of agriculture. Here is the area of Bahar al Azraq, which is uh, located just behind the Super Carrefour centers. Uh, this area also was nearly completely abandoned as it's neighboring directly the salt depression of Ariana. Today also, many houses are in phase of construction and some popular quarters also are growing everywhere. If in period of Punic Carthage, the areas of Bahar al Azraq just behind Carthage, which was defined to be the Megara, it means the agricultural and gardens of Carthage space. Today, completely swallowed by this urbanism. We didn't learn from the way Carthaginians were organizing their life, their economies, and, of course, their imagination. Taking the decision to cross the desert makes us probably think about our current situation and also about the different or possible ways that we are going to undertake in future. This reflection is very important for any humankind so that we can apprehend and excavate our future life our future landscapes.